everyone, this is Tammy at Snowstorm Crafts. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. So today I have a fun project that we can do. And uh, my husband and I went and he, he actually drew all these out. He's the artist. I mean, like with drawing and stuff, he's really, really, really good at it. And um, so I asked him if he could help me and draw out some fun pumpkin templates here. So we got different sizes, different ones. So these are super fun. And then little faces that you can, uh, in, you know, interchange in between. So I think that'll be fun. And yeah, so he went and did that and I'm going to put these into my Etsy shop and I'll put the link down below as digitals and you guys can come and just print them out and you get three pages just like this that we get to play with. So today I wanna to show you some examples of what I've made with these and I wanna show you a fun project that we can do today together. And I'll show you guys step by step. So stay tuned. Okay, and did I also mention this is a great scrap buster for fabrics, papers, painty papers, napkins, all kinds of stuff. And so much fun to do. And I just, I, oh my gosh, I couldn't stop. I was having so much fun doing these and I figured I'd start a video with you guys and show you uh, some fun steps here that we could do. Okay, so this is the one I wanna show you guys today how I did it. It is just a patchwork pumpkin and it's super fun and it's not too bad. It's sewing and I will show you step by step and it's really not that hard. And then I will show you easier versions of this. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on this, the one that we're going to do together. And it's just a little patchwork pieces here. And we'll talk about these later. I'll put these to the side and I'll tell you guys how I did all those. Okay, so this one, what I thought would be fun, I wanna do this shape. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. And we got a fun little stem with it and everything. So I don't wanna lose that. So that's the shape I wanna work with today. And I want to do fabrics and I wanna do polka dots. I thought I just thought polka dots would be so much fun. I have my iron over here ready and heating up. So I got that on the side and I got an iron safe area here. Uh, but yes, just make sure if you're gonna do an iron, do not do it on your, uh, that's why I took out my uh, my cutting board, you know, your, your cutting board, the measuring and all the craft board. Because if you iron on top of that, it will warp. So just be careful and just have an iron safe area that will not have anything underneath it that's gonna melt or warp or anything like that. Okay, that being said, let's get started here. So I just thought this was so much fun, so much fun. So we're gonna start off with just a piece of muslin, uh, calico, just a fabric, any kind of fabric. This is gonna be the base part of it, okay? And you just need to make sure that it's gonna be wide enough for your pattern, okay? So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna snip and rip here. Just getting the measurements, just roughly. You just don't want it too small. Okay. And these are just so much fun to make, they really are. Okay, and once you guys get it, you're gonna be making a bunch of them and they're super fun. And like I said, I'm gonna show you guys different versions uh, that are non no sew or you know, you can glue down. So I'm just gonna take this and just flatten it out with my iron here. Okay. So I hope you guys are having a crafty day today and getting out all your scraps and seeing what we can make here because this is always fun. I mean, I love little pumpkins for Halloween. They're so much fun to play with. And they keep all your little strings and ends and stuff. These are going to be incorporated too. Love them. Okay. So we did that. And I want it to be this way. Okay. 
where like this one was this way, you know, it was up like that. So I don't think it really even matters, but let's do that. And we're just gonna start off with the center piece here. Okay, and it doesn't even need, it doesn't need to be perfectly square. I mean, I'd rather it not be square. So just any scrap, this is why this is great for scraps. You can just grab it and just get it however it is. The only thing is just iron it, you know, make sure that it's pretty straight because this is gonna be sewing um, and then the ironing helps a lot. Okay, so we're just gonna take it, pop down the middle, just like that. Then you're gonna take your next one that you wanna use. And we're gonna do it just inside out like that. Just, they're gonna be good to good. And you're just gonna make sure that it just goes straight across here. So just like this to about here. And I just do the snip and rip technique. It's just so much faster and easier and all that good stuff. Okay, and then you can just, you know, cut the ends off here, the pieces you don't want. So I'm going to line it up edge to edge, good to good, and just go with a straight stitch quarter inch seam and just go back stitch all the way down and then another back stitch and I'll be back. And honestly, it doesn't even matter what color thread you have in your machine, especially if you're using scraps and just doing a fun, scrappy um, little quilted pumpkin here. Okay, so we did that. All I did is just made sure to catch it here and here from the beginning, back stitch, sew it across, straight stitch, quarter inch seam allowance. Super easy so far. Then you're gonna take it, make sure you guys are in here, so you can see what I'm doing. You're gonna flip it just like that. Then you're gonna iron it down. So you just want everything just crisp and you know flat. Okay, there we go. So we did that. Now, also if you want, because we could do that, I'll show you. We could do the next. I mean, does it really even matter? Grab whatever. So what you're gonna want to do is you just make sure that you don't leave like a hole like that. You know, like if you went sideways like this, well, you go good to good. So if you went sideways like that and then when you flipped it, you had like a hole like that, that's what we're trying to avoid. So just make sure anytime you're doing it, you don't wanna have a hole of like the, you don't want the backing to show through, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna line it up and you can also take the bulk, see how this is like this. If you don't want any bulk behind it, you can just go like that. Then you don't have any bulk. So I'm just gonna go straight across. Easy peasy. And I'm just going to start on this edge and just backstitch, so quarter inch seam allowance and then sew, and then when we flip it, we have it like that, okay? So that's what I'm gonna go do right now. Right. So I went ahead and did that. You can see, I just started here at the edge of the bottom one. So this can flap over like that, and like that, because we can always cut that off if we want. don't want the bulk. Okay, so you just flip it open, just like this. And it's so fun. You never know what you're going to get every time, you know? You just kind of pop them down. And you, of course, we're going to start small and then work our way with bigger, longer fabrics as you go out to the edges. Okay. So let's see. So like this, if you don't want this bulk right here, you take it and cut that off. Okay. And like if you don't want this so much of it, you could just trim it. I mean, so, you know, you can just kind of piece this together however you want. Just see where it's bulky, where you don't want it, where you want to take off a little bit of extra here. Like that. There we go. Okay. So, we'll give it another press. Alright. Now, we'll find another one. And let's see. Let's 
let's go here. Okay, good, good, good. And if you want, you can go like from here to like that. Why not? And then I'm just going to sew it straight across just like that. Just like that. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to start. And you just want to make sure that you get this part right here. You know, where you go underneath it to here. Because you want to make sure when you flip it, it's all tucked in like that. So just like that. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. This is just so much fun. Okay, so I just went from here to here. Okay, and then you just open it up. Just like that. And it's just like a puzzle. I'm just putting a piece of puzzle here. And once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And practice, you know? That's what it takes. Just do a little bit of practicing and, you know, just grab some scrap pieces that you don't really, you know, you're not too fond of and just, you know, start with those, of course, and just see where it takes you. And, you know, like, I mean, when I first started, of course, you know, you got, you did it and then you had this part open and you're like, darn it. And you had to stitch rip it and ugh, it's the whole journey, I guess, you know, to get here. But man, these turn out really fun. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just taking the bulk off the sides just like that. Easy peasy. Okay. Then you look at it and go, okay, what do I want to do? What piece, you know, what piece do I want to take here? I did that one. I don't really want to do repeaters here. Um, I'll do that one's pretty. So if it's all wrinkly, just give it an iron quick. That's why I'm just keeping my iron on over here in a safe spot. I'm not going to melt nothing. <laughs> and yeah, let's go from there. Let's see. So good to good. Just gotta remember that. I have to remind myself. Okay. And I'm just gonna go from boop to boop, straight across. Okay. So my tip to you guys is, I think I said it, but I'm gonna say it again, is when you're doing this, just make sure you're not just taking it and running straight here, you know, like this end, like you went all the way to the end of this. Don't do that. Cause it just won't look right. Like you want to go just to the end of the fabric right here, the one fabric that you have, and you're just going to want to stop right there and just right there. And then you take it and then you flip it and just go like that and you can iron it down. And then you can see how you can see through it right here. So you can just take this piece right here and just cut that off just like that. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. And then just cut the back of it. If you can flip it and see through it, that's what I would do. Um, so go ahead and do that and let's get it ironed down. And I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing and I'm just gonna keep piecing it together and I will do that in time-lapse and then we'll talk about it at the end. I also wanted to show you guys, so like as you lay it down, you can even take it and flip just like that and just look at it and see if you have any corners, you know, that are showing the bottom or anything like that. So you could do that before you sew it and give it a good look. And that's one way to test it for sure. So I just wanted to show you guys that little trick. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this. So see how this one is the longest because it's on the outside here. Um, I just did it all the way across and then I'm just going to flip it like that. And then you can see, I mean, how cool is that? So there's the back. That's the muslin right there. Just the calico material or whatever you're using for a background. And I don't mind that this one's not really covered cause it won't, we're going to have plenty to use here. So I'm just going to take that, come over here, give everything a quick iron. I mean, this is just so rewarding. I love it. It's so much fun to use up your scraps and make a cute little pumpkin. So now this is when you look at it and see which way you want it. So that's why it doesn't really matter. You can have it like this. We can have it like, I kind of want it like that. Okay. And 
then just look at it, make sure your pattern fits and make sure, you know, you could put it where you want. If you want a little piece here showing, I mean, you can even do it, but I don't think it'll fit that way. So that's why, yeah, we gotta make sure. Let's make sure here. Um, but yeah, so cool. So I think I'm gonna do it like this. What you could do is just put it down, get your pens over here. I just got some straight pens. And we're just gonna pin it. So what's cool is when you get these digitals, you can print them off as many times as you want. So if you put pinholes in it or mark on it or do anything, you can just print it off again if this one gets old or ripped or you know anything like that. Because once you purchase it, you could just uh, keep on printing them out. Okay, so I'm just gonna line that up, pop my needle through it. So that's gonna st stabilize it here. Take your fabric scissors and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to cut all the way around it. So this turned out so cool. What do you guys think? If, if you guys are liking this video, please hit the like button and comment down below. I'd really love to hear what you guys think. And if you guys tried making this and please give it a try. I mean, really, I think you guys, it's pretty simple. You just keep doing it and just do just, you know, you could pause the video, rewind it and go back and look and see just how I did it. And once you get the hang of it, you guys would be making these like crazy because they're pretty fun. They're really easy and they're really fun to make. So yeah, please comment down below. I'd love to hear. Okay. So we got that. That's the base of it. Now I want to, I'm going to take some felt. Just got a piece of felt here and I got the stem. I'm gonna take, I got chalk. It's just cheap chalk from the store <laughs> down the street. So just take your piece of chalk. And this is the best way to do it on, on felt that I've found out. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda go around it like this. Just kinda go like that. And make like a shadow print of it. So you just kinda hold your finger. And I do the same concept with the faces, all the little, uh, the little face, like we got, that's why it has chalk on it. It's just like the little triangle pieces and stuff like that. If you just take it and just kind of go like this, it gives you like a shadow print and it makes it just easy to cut out. Like you see the triangle and you see the stem like that. So that's the easiest I've found to just get stuff cut out because the chalk, it'll go away. Okay, so I'll show you that little tip and trick here. And then you just take your scissors and we'll cut out the stem. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out the stem with the felt and then I just did some sewing around it. Just some quick stitching around it, just a straight stitch. Now, what I wanna do, and this is better with darker fabric to do the lines, but uh, you can even eyeball it too if you want to. So I see the, there's lines on the pumpkin and they're just a reference to look at. So you can kind of just see, you know, of course they don't have to be perfect or nothing, but I'm just gonna draw approximately where I want the lines, just with my chalk. And this is just the guidance. Like that. And if you guys want, you could just do it with pen. Just do it with a Sharpie. You don't even have to sew the lines on anything. So like this one, I did a, a zigzag stitch. And then this one, I just did the straight stitch. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a straight stitch again. So just kinda wherever you think you want them. And they're just curved. Just take them and curve them around. And then I'm just gonna take it to my sewing machine and just sew along the lines. All right, so I went ahead and did, just did some lines on there and you can see they're not perfect. It's just for fun, just to kind of give it a, you know, something visual to look at to see 
there's little creases in the pumpkin. So it's kind of fun. It's supposed to be like whimsical, you know, something like that. So it's not too much pressure. And let's take our stem. And I kept some threads just hanging because I think that's fun too. It's kind of cool. And I'm just using my Fabrifix glue here. Just glue it down. Just take your stem. Put it where you want it. Like that. Okay. And now if you want like these little flaps and stuff, you could do a sew around like a, a zigzag stitch all the way around it if you want to. Or you could just take your Fabra Fix glue or some kind of fabric kind of glue and just, just tack it like that. Do the edges tack. Just be careful because uh, it will seep through if you get big clumps and it's kind of thin fabric, it'll come, the glue will seep through. So just do a little bit and kind of smear it around. Just enough to tack down. But like I said, you could do a zigzag all the way around all of it. Okay. There. So I'm just tacking it down. Did that. And then on here, what I did is I have some cute little flowers, just some dried flowers from the dollar store, and I spray painted them. And I think I did this like a metallic gold. I just took them all outside. Um, geez, I think this was like a year ago and I had, I had them forever and I put them in like a box and had it outside and then, you know, sprayed it make sure you're not breathing it in and make sure you're in an opened area outside. And I just did some sprays, let it dry, flipped it over to the other side. So they're kind of fun. And let's see. I also use some of this moss. It's just uh, natural super moss, just craft moss. And I think I got this from my mom, so I have no clue where she got it from, but I thought this would be really cool to glue down in the background. I mean, how fun is this? Kind of just gives you that pumpkin-y vibe. And I would suggest maybe put this in a Ziploc bag or something so it doesn't get too dried out. I think this is all dried because I've had this for years and I finally opened it, but I probably should put it over in a maybe a Ziploc airtight container. I think that would help. Okay, let's see. Let's see here. So I have this, I got my flower. Um, I have some of these little fun little vines. And let's see what color do I want? I did that, that. I think this one would look cool. So just whatever you got, just some fun little decorative, uh, odds and ends that you can pop onto it and you know just see where it takes you so let's see so I think that would look cute here I made it kind of long but that's okay okay so what I did and you can even take some of your threads just add a little bit more maybe hang in because these are always fun I mean, you might not be able to see them all, but just, you know, just have some more threads kind of hanging down. And you can use up your little threads that you have. It's a win-win. Okay. So I'm just kind of layering it up. It kind of hides the stem up there. Just anything you can find just to, you know, so you don't have just a straight across just stem. It's kind of nice to put some stuff down. some glue down, put down some moss here. I mean, some of it's probably going to fall off, but that's okay. Um, let's do this. I don't know if I want it this long, but just pop that in there with the glue. It should stick. I just kind of put it, guide it where I want it, and you can just dab a little glue down. You know, lay it down. There we go. I mean, look how fun that is so far. So just pile up some stuff you got, even some threads and ropes and um, yarns and just different fun things like that would look great. Um, and then I have 
my little flower. And then I just have a bead. It's just a fun little bead. And I thought that would look cool in the middle. So let's see. I'll do it on the side here. There we go. Pop a little glue in the middle. So when te tweezers might come in handy. But there we go. And then just give everything, you know, a good press down. And that wasn't too bad, was it? I'd love to hear in the comments. I mean, I, I just thought this would be just a fun little project to show you guys that you can piece together. And like I said, I'll have the digitals down below uh, that you guys could come check out my Etsy shop. And yeah, I mean, look at that. Is that super fun? And these are great. I would love to hear if you guys want to know, if you guys want to see a video of me um, incorporating these into journals. Yeah, let me know down below. I would love to hear if you guys want to see me do something with the journals with these, with some junk journals. Okay, so let's let's check out what we got here. And we'll talk about it for a second. Let me clean up for a second. I'll be right back. So let's talk about this one for a second. So you can see that it's a little different. From this one this one's you know more straight edge more you know uh, put together where it's not so ruggedy raggedy you know so if you want a straight edge kind of look this is the way to do it and that's the one I just showed you guys step by step now this one way easier super fun I love the little all the little craziness and the little fluffers and the little uh, odds and ends and stuff so same concept all you got to do is just take your scraps and just lay them, just lay them down. And I just did fabric fix glue. So this is a no sew option. The only thing I really sewed was the stem and then just did the edging, the little lines here. But you could totally no sew. You just cut it, rip it, lay it down and do the next thing. Pile it, just the same concept as this, but you're just gluing them on top of each other. That's all I did here. So I laid the first one down, glued the next one, glued the next one, glued it on top. So I just puzzle pieced it all together and just glued them all on top of each other. Uh, super easy, fun to do. And then I did the same kind of layering technique as we did here at the top. And I just added a little leaf. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I did on this one. And you can just see just the sewing there and I left the threads. So that's one way to do it for the, for the no sew option, okay? And I got another no sew option for you guys is I just cut out the pattern, cut it off onto a uh, tissue box. It was just a tissue box I had made it, you know, so just some cardstock in the background and I decoupage some napkin that I, it's a black napkin that I uh, took my word stamp in my gesso and just stamped it onto the napkin, let it dry and then just did some decoupaging on with some uh, glue and water. I just did Elmer's glue and water and put down the glue first, put the napkin on top, put the glue on top, let it dry. And then just did a piece of cardstock here. That's white showing inked around it and added some fun little stuff to it. So that's something easy. And this is great to put into your junk journals as a pocket. So you can just glue it down, just glue down. You can just glue it down here you know, like that, and you can have it just be a tuck, or you could just kind of glue up the sides a little bit and have it be just a cute little pocket. So these are great for that, okay? And then this one, I took our painty, or what did we do? I did my scraps. So this is all my like end, my end cuts and stuff off of my signatures. And I showed you guys how to grunge them up, and I did some sewing on them, which was optional. And I will post that on the end screen to show you guys if you want to come check out how to do these. So I just grabbed out of this bin of uh, my random stuff in here, but just all the little grungy papers that we did and I grunged them up and some with sewing, some without. And you just, I just took them and glued them onto a piece of cardstock. I mean, you could use like a uh, cereal box, anything like that, because these are great just to put down and make as a pocket in your junk journals. So I did that. Did a little decorative on top with some cheesecloth, uh, uh, some of the vines here, some fun little thing. Uh, I don't even know what you'd call that. A little rickracky. 
<laughs> little rick racky thing. And uh, some felt. Made a little stem with it. And there we go. So that's kind of fun to do. So that's a no sew option. And then I took and did this one. This is my, this size my husband did as kind of a belly band idea. So this is great. You know, just, you can just do it on some cardstock. And uh, we I cut out the face with the felt, like I showed you guys with the chalk. And then I just used some of this puff paint, just the 3D puff paint. And I think I have the kit. It comes with a lot of colors, like a lot. And I think I have the kit in my links down below if you guys want to come check that out. But I did the 3D paint and then just did these two colors, white and black, and just made some little eyes. Uh, this is just a piece of coffee dyed paper that I stenciled on. I glued it on. Uh, went ahead and took my little inker here and Distress Crackle. And it works great. And I just went around it and made it kind of orange color, like a crackly color. I love it, love it. And then just did some pens. I took a pen, just a regular ballpoint pen, and just drew the lines. I drew the lines after I did the face, but you can do it first either way. Uh, added some toppers, got some stem going up here, and just put down my threads and stuff. I had some orange and black threads. So this is great. You just glue, put a little glue here and a little glue here, put it in your journal, and you got yourself a little belly band. So you got pockets, belly bands, covers of journals. These are great for covers to put on on your cover. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so much fun. So I hope you guys come check out my digitals. And this is what they look like again. This is the pumpkin templates. And we've got different things here. Just like that. And then you get three sheets. So you get three sheets of them. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. And if you could please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and you guys can see my next video when I post it. Like, comment, share, and let's grow together. And keep on crafting.